Well, here it all is. Got that. The case is empty. I'm gonna take out the shift forks and levers too, just because I wanna clean underneath them and get everything all good. And then that bench overflowed, so now we've got this bench. So will it all go back together again? Did I, do I have the order correct for all the pieces? Hopefully I should. So, this is part two in the series I'm doing on rebuilding the gearbox of my Monarch lathe. If you haven't seen part one, I suggest you watch that first. Part one ended with us taking out the spindle of the lathe. In this section, I'm going to get out the rest of the shafts and clean up the gearbox and get it set for reassembly. I'm not sure how many parts this series is going to be, but there's going to be at least a few more, so subscribe to follow along with this project. It's hard enough doing a project like this, but filming everything was also hard, so I missed a couple of the steps in this process, but there's nothing terribly exciting. This is me taking off the reverser shaft, and I missed taking apart the inside of it, but it's just a couple of bolts and it comes out. To take out the main input shaft, you have to take apart the whole clutch mechanism. This had been making noise, so I knew it needed to be looked at anyways. There's an adjustment setting for the clutch for when it wears. You just pull out the pin, and you, the whole thing unscrews. On mine, the spring that holds the pin in place is broken, so it doesn't quite work right. And also, the hole's all egged out, so I think the pin was sticking in too far. Anyways, it's something I'm going to need to f fix later on. Check this out. <laughs> Do you think that's factory? No. <laughs> <laughs> Show in your parts book. I have no idea what the little, what these are. Place six, eight, or ten, eight, six, eight, ten, or twelve random springs <laughs> some place around the perimeter. <laughs> oh, okay. I see what that was. I think they're supposed to just go out here and help release the clutch. Oh, out here? No, in like this one. I can't see it. Oh yeah. Holes? Yeah. Yeah, they're not like that one. Yeah. Yeah, they're not supposed to be half in, half out, or not half in, in a, or look at this one. I think it wasn't long enough. Yeah. And somebody did that to make it longer. Yep. Yeah, definitely need some uh, TLC. Yep. Well, there's only two more shafts left. Got the input shaft out, and the main shaft, and then the reversing shaft down here for the for the feeds. So I'm going to work on getting these last two out. So this shaft here, I'm going to try to drive out that way. Can't see anything on here that would be stopping it from, from leaving. So I'm trying to take out this lower shaft in the back. And these gears are fixed to the shaft somehow. And obviously, they're not going to fit through the hole in the case. And I couldn't see any of those rings that the other ones have as far as positioning, but I realized that some of the, they have two holes. There's a hole there, and there's a hole here. And those holes must, and there's another, let's see, one. So there's four holes in here. So there must be something, those holes must be there for a reason. So. Perhaps they go down to set screws or to pins or something. So I'm going to try to get... I can't see anything down in those holes. They might just be oil holes to get oil down in to help these spin on the shaft freely. So change of plans. This shaft I got loose, but it appears to be hitting this other gear here. So that tells me that I need to take off, take out this shaft first. So I'm going to work on doing that.
down in here, there's a pin with a cotter pin held in place by cotter pins. So I can take out those cotter pins and get that pin out. And then there's a couple other of those rings with set screws in it. So I'm gonna get those loosened up and then get the shaft out. This set screw has the loving hands of home touch to it. It's been ground down. So somebody's been in here before because Monarch certainly didn't hand grind set screw points on set screws. Let's see. This cover plate is held on by three slotted screws and one Allen screw. And of course the slotted screws are really hard to get loose. So I've got my impact driver. Um, these things are great. If you don't have one, get one. They're for stuck screws, there's nothing better that I've found. This is making me feel a little bit better about taking it apart. And see, I don't know how bad these races are, but these bearings got this gritty gunk, rust, something around on the outside. So there's no way I was ever going to get that cleaned out without taking those covers off. Of course, I probably don't need to take the shafts completely out, but <laughs> I also can't check out the bearing races, so I might as well just take them out. So I need to pull out this pin to get the shift forks out, those little shift dogs, and there's nothing to grab onto. So what I've been doing is I hold this fork that way and tap it, tap it, the pin works its way out. Physics! There we go. <laughs> Glad that worked. It wouldn't work if that was super tight. Yeah, right. But now this... Oh, do I need to get the other one off too? How the heck am I going to get that one out? Oh, no, it goes up by. And then this should just lift up out. Right. This should just lift up out. There we go. Yeah. I'm going to see how tight this headstock cone is in here. If it's really tight, I'll have to do a better color system. If it moves out... This is the last bearing race that needs to come out. I've gotten the other ones out with using a punch and the gentle taps of the hammer and they've all come out pretty easy. But this one, there's not much of a lip here and to get a punch in there, I need to really angle it and I'm afraid I'm gonna damage the casting. So, in my other way, I made this. That should go in there, I should be able to pound on that and drive out the bearing. far enough out that I should be able to use regular punch, just work it around. So if anyone questions why you need two lathes, this is why. You've got one lathe to make this, so you can fix your other lathe. There we go, that's the last race. I'm 
lines around it and some pitting in there. Whole surface is just kind of just slightly bumpy and rough. So it's like, no surprise, chips were rolling around and getting pressed in there. Actually, this is a little bit of a surprise because this bearing was only fed oil through the oil pump. But So some of these are pretty near perfect. It only has a little discoloration there, but the rest of it's pretty good. So I'm going to see how much these races are and to decide if I'm going to get new ones. I'll probably err on the side of getting new ones, but some of them were hard to find or were really expensive. So, like, if this one's like 50 bucks, I don't know if we'll bother replacing it for just those little specs. Because when you have it on the cone, that feels really pretty good. It's still got oil in it, nice and smooth. And this other one also feels good. This bearing. Also looks pretty darn good considering it was how many metal shavings were inside that headstock. This is one of the worst cups. It's got this big old chunk out of it. And that staining is pretty smooth, but well, where's it in focus? But that's not going to end well. Having that in there. The next step is going to be to remove the shift levers, or shift arms. Probably don't absolutely need to take these out, but I'm this far in, and I want to get this case really well cleaned. Let's see. We tried to flush and clean as much as we could with all the shafts and everything in there, so we spent probably a couple hours cleaning in here already. And there's still this stuff in the bottom. So even with all the cleaning we did, there's shavings like that guy still in the bottom of the lathe. So and all this goo is magnetic probably. So I just want to get all this shit out of the the inside of the lathe. And really Taking the shafts out is going to make that so much easier. I got the shaft out and down in here underneath there's some good chunky stuff. I don't even, oh there's a, a whole set screw down on the bottom. And here's a key from in here. There were three keys back here but only two key slots in the shaft. So um, there's an extra one floating around down here. So. Yeah, and a little set screw. <laughs> Just a balloon. <laughs> Make this really worthwhile. Oh, another key. Another big chunky thing. That's a good chunk right there. That thing. I don't want to use the aluminum. Oh, that's a lovely noise. The aluminum pan because you can, see. you can see and then after I you know plug up the holes and flush it some I can put a magnet in there and see how much I actually sticks to the yeah. I gotta see if we have the correct plug in our plug collection oh, that's not bad let's see this one better that one's not quite big enough a little bit too small. There we go. So now those holes are plugged up. I had to put some diesel fuel in here and swish it around, brush it as much as I can, try to get it all over to this side so I can drain it out into the pan. So as I've been flushing around, I put some magnets down on the bottom. So this is what one of the magnets looks like. And here's the other one. So I have all sorts of metal down in there. And 
This isn't even the biggest stuff. Well, maybe it's the biggest stuff, but there was more down by the magnetic drain plug and a bunch that just flushed straight out the first time I drained it down into the bottom of my drain pan. So, yeah. So this is the stuff that's been rinsed through the gearbox. See, it's all murky and dirty. Um, I need more room in here because I need to flush some more. But this bin was fairly clear and it's been sitting overnight. So I'm just curious what has settled out in the bottom. So I'm gonna carefully pour this into the other one. Now, I know what you're thinking, this could just be whale sludge or whatever else, and a lot of it might be, but that uh, clean magnet here, this is an aluminum pan, let that roll around in there. And now it's completely covered with stuff. There's even some big chunks here. So, all this sludge is magnetic sludge. Yeah, look at that thing. So, <laughs> this, this stuff definitely needed to come out of the, the lathe gearbox. Look at that. I finally got the inside of this clean enough. I had some diesel fuel in here and kept swishing it around. It had magnets in the bottom, had these stack of magnets, and I'd wipe off the magnets, get them all clean, swish some more, and kept picking up more and more metal filings. And finally got to the point where I think I got all that I'm gonna get. So then I washed it down with uh, parts cleaner to get all the, um, the diesel fuel out and unstick everything. And there's a few little metal fragments down the bottom, but these might be Oh, that one went. Yeah. Oh, that is a metal uh, magnetic one. Is it magnetic? Anyways, there's still a few little flakes down the bottom, but I'm going to vacuum those out and then blow it up with compressed air, and hopefully that'll be everything. I'm still going to leave the magnets in the bottom. Um, it'd be really nice to turn this whole thing upside down and just flush it, but yeah, that's that's not going to happen. So this ends part one. Here I'm installing one of the good bearings, the, the bottom little shaft there. Both bearings were good on it, so I can put that back in again. I'm still waiting on the rest of the bearings to come from eBay. I bought a bunch of new old stock bearings from eBay, so hopefully that worked out. Uh, they were on average half price of what a new one was and the biggest savings was for the big headstock bearing uh, new there was like three hundred and seventy dollars and there was a new old stock one on ebay for fifty bucks so hopefully that works out well i hope you like this video subscribe to follow along with the rest of this project and check out my other videos about this lathe as well as my other projects i've got going on